In this video, we're going to be discussing why diesel engines tend to leak a lot more oil than their gasoline counterparts. Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel here today, and today we're going to be discussing why diesel engines tend to leak oil more than their gasoline counterparts. And if you've ever worked in a diesel shop, you'll know that almost every diesel engine, unless it's fairly brand new, comes in, it's going to have some oil weeping out of somewhere, dripping on the ground. It's going to have various leaks all over the place, or at least they tend to. Why is that? You know, if you own an automotive engine, it's probably not leaking, even if it's, say, 10 years old. You probably don't have a big puddle of oil under it outside on your driveway. Well, there's various reasons for this, but in this video we're going to be discussing mostly is an acronym called PCV. Now, if when I say that, you think of this, this is PVC. This is polyvinyl chloride. This is not what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is positive crankcase ventilation and what is that well let's get into it so to understand how your pcb system works and how it affects oil leaks we need to understand the system first so in all combustion engines gasoline or diesel there's an amount of blow by which is gases that pass through the piston rings and the cylinder wall during combustion and what this does is it pushes these gases into your crankcase and over time if you had a completely sealed engine these would accumulate to create so much pressure that it would blow the seals out of your engine somewhere to relieve the pressure I had a cat engine once that the blow-by tube had sealed off because they used the wrong type of rubber on their blow-by tube and it actually blew up the valve cover repeatedly and they couldn't figure out why and this is what was happening and gas engines have this too but in the 60s they started experimenting with the pcv system and how does it work well gasoline engines create a vacuum when the piston is traveling down the cylinder wall and that's to draw in air because most gasoline engines are naturally aspirated this sucks in the air and the fuel to create combustion diesels just suck in air and what this does this vacuum that's created is being harnessed to basically suck those blow by fumes out of the crankcase and back into the intake manifold because you have a vacuum there. This allows these blow-by fumes to be combusted with your fuel and your air during the combustion process. And what this does is it creates a slight vacuum in the crankcase. And that slight vacuum prevents oil seeping out of the seals because instead of there being crankcase pressure, and it's slowly pushing the fumes and your oil out of all your seals, it's actually trying to pull air into the engine because the engine's under a slight vacuum in the entire crankcase. So you might be wondering, well, why don't diesels do that? Why don't diesels just suck the blow-by fumes right into the intake? Well, there's one big difference between a diesel and a gas engine, and that's a turbocharger. Now, there are some gas engines of course with turbochargers or superchargers but for the majority of them they're naturally aspirated and there are some diesels without turbochargers but for the majority of them they have turbochargers so why can't you use a pcv system with a turbocharger the reason you cannot use a pcv system with a turbocharged engine is because your intake manifold isn't under vacuum. It's not sucking air and fuel into the combustion chamber. It's actually being forced in because your turbocharger is creating positive pressure, also known as boost. So if you were to hook up your crankcase disposal fumes unit to your intake manifold, once you rev the engine up, you're gonna be pushing boost into the crankcase, which would just increase the crankcase pressure even more and result in blown out seals or blown up valve cover. So, this is why diesel engines tend to leak more. They are constantly under pressure. Now, there are a few advancements in recent years that have tried to work around this system. 
Um, and we're going to discuss those. So one of the earliest things people try to do, and when I first came in the truck shop, I saw a lot of these was they would try to put the crankcase fumes, your blow by, into the inlet of the turbo. Because before your turbocharger, the turbo is sucking in air as well as the engine is. So there's a slight vacuum there. And this would pull your crankcase fumes out of the crankcase in through the turbo and then into the intake manifold. Right? That sounds like it solves the problem. Well, let's just say we had more than one turbocharger failure for that reason. Turbos are incredibly sensitive to anything other than air going through them. Under full load, a turbocharger is going to be spinning over 100,000 RPM. That's pretty fast. The last thing you want hitting the turbine at 100,000 RPMs is little droplets of oil at differing temperatures. We had a lot of blown up turbochargers, and this was mostly on the C7s, which are a single turbo. So you can't really just dump all your blow-by fumes into the turbocharger before it and expect the turbocharger to last very long. I don't recommend it. So what other items have been tried and work to some varying success? Well, International on their Max Force engines, they kind of found a way to use not exactly a PCV system, but it works under similar principles. So what do they use? Well, you still want to create a small vacuum in your crankcase to prevent leaks and to get rid of your blow-by fumes. And what they do is they use a oil-powered turbine. And what they do is they spray engine oil on this turbine, not air. It's similar to a turbocharger, but instead of using your exhaust to spin the turbine, they use oil pressure. And what that does is it creates a slight vacuum. And this slight vacuum will help pull or scavenge the blow-by fumes out of the engine and then through a breather filter that helps keep your diesel engine free of leaks. What about Caterpillar and Cummins? Well, their first attempts to fix the blow-by issue was actually not to try to scavenge fumes out of the blow-by system, but most of their engines would have what they call a crankcase filter. And that was actually more to reduce the amount of blow-by leaving the engine by collecting the oil that was leaving through the blow-by fumes and then draining it back into the engine. That actually made the blow-by problem worse because it wasn't helping to pull the fumes out of the crankcase. It was just trapping more of the fumes in by making them go through a filter first. So this would actually cause more leak or could cause more leaks if your filter became plugged or wasn't serviced regularly because opposed to the older design where the fumes would just exit out of a wire mesh and then go into the atmosphere, now they had to go through a filter first, which would create a restriction, which would increase crankcase pressure, which would inevitably lead to more leaks potentially. So the next time you might see a leak on a diesel engine, at least you might know why they tend to leak more. Hope you enjoyed the video.